in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Oh, I love the wisdom of God. See, brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Look up, look up. If you pay the price, you see, wisdom is so powerful. You don't need to give somebody to keep it for you and then you collect it. It's not subject to the wickedness of another person. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to warm it. Huh? You don't need to save it in a bank. It has equal value in every nation. Hallelujah. You don't need to keep it in a safe and then be afraid if a thief will come and pick it. When you have it, you have gotten it. It's as simple as that. There are things, see, the apostle said, such as I have, a man can know that he has something. It's not guesswork. You can know that you have something. Hallelujah. And I have come to cherish the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God will make you do things that will cause men to wonder. They said, what wisdom is this? May that be someone's testimony. That a generation will look at you and say, what wisdom is this? I cannot believe that with the kind of background you had or with the kind of past you had, you are still surpassing standards. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Tonight, please, even if you've never paid attention in anything that I've been teaching, this is one of the nights where I believe God will alter someone's destiny radically. Hallelujah. Radically. What you do not know can destroy you. Are you listening to me? What you do not know, brothers and sisters, in this realm, ignorance is not an excuse. What you do not know can destroy you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Help us. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to thee, O oh, we rejoice, we rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us, O oh, we Israel. Lord, you are in the midst of your people and we salute your excellency. You have come to make us like you. 
we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ we're taking on the subject of extraordinary success tonight the Lord put this so strong in my heart I'm so excited because this is one of those days that you will walk out of this place rejoicing knowing that your life has become predictable hallelujah praise the Lord I'm like a bee my life is a product of many many anointings I have gleaned from the wisdom of many men my father called me some years ago and he said you're a young man with gray hair wisdom can add to your status in life wisdom can make a boy called Joash at age eight to become the king of an entire nation wisdom can make a feeble person called David to defeat a roaring enemy called Goliath I cherish the wisdom of God I cherish the wisdom of the Spirit sometimes when I sit down I just begin to weep and I salute the Spirit of God for the ministry of all the men and the women of God who have poured in and invested in my life. Some of them may never know the impact that they have made in my life. But I am so grateful. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving as your son and leaving your spirit in your work on earth is done thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit in your work on earth is done. The Holy Spirit has moved through great and mighty men and women and has opened them to different dimensions of grace in the kingdom. And we remain indebted hallelujah this teaching tonight is very dear to my heart and I hope that we will receive it and may it change us in the name of Jesus the first thing I want to talk about tonight is just to challenge us on our responsibilities as far as success is concerned the topic is extraordinary success as far as being successful in life is concerned, please listen to me. You have a role to play. Everyone say, I have a role to play. When it comes to the success equation, I want you to know that God has a part to play. But you also have a part to play. Please get this. It is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. We have two extremes in the body of Christ when it comes to the issue of success. There are others who believe success is purely based on intellectualism and hard work and all of that. And they neglect the place of God to their detriment. And they find out that they never become successful. And then there are others, especially those who are spiritual and they love God. And they believe that because they are spiritual and they love God and they experience his presence, success should just occur automatically. Both people are in error. There is an imbalance. Are you getting my point? When it comes to the kingdom, you have a role to play 
and God has a role to play. It is your playing of your role and God playing his role that makes your success extraordinary, that makes your success guaranteed. Praise the Lord. It's important for you to know this. I always say this when I'm teaching on success, that it is dangerous and oftentimes destructive to try to share truths with people when they do not see the need to receive it. Are you getting my point? It is very dangerous. Listen, let me tell you something. When God started out with me, I was so excited at the depths of truth and insight that God was giving me. And I made a big mistake and I don't want you to make that mistake. And the mistake that I made was that I assume everybody had my kind of passion. Are you getting my point? So every revelation God shared with me, I was just looking for just every and anybody to share it with. And I saw the way that certain revelations came to me as precious pearls. And I carried it and gave people and they dropped it on the floor and matched it. They trivialized the depth of the dealings with the spirit. Never waste your time trying to give information to people who have not seen the need to receive it. Please get this. God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, they that seek me will find me. You must communicate your desire and your desperation for God. It says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. It's a law in the spirit. Never waste your time trying to invest your time, your energy, your resources in people who have not communicated a desire to receive it and don't feel guilty about it. There are many parents who spend money trying to pay the school fees of people who are just not interested. Have you seen people like that? You pay money for lesson and you come and find the person just gisting around or playing computer games. Do not waste your time and your resources on people. Make sure you probe the sincerity of their willingness to receive. Is someone learning something this night? I used to feel so guilty because I felt if God gives you something, you should lavishly give it. And you know, I became an enemy to many people because I was forcing them to try to get these principles. And I just found out that some people are just not interested. Are you getting my point? So learn it tonight. Treasure the informations that you receive from the Spirit. Treasure your sacrifices. Don't trivialize your sacrifices. You may pick up this message right now as a gift and give someone. And the person tells you, please, I'm busy. I'm expecting a call somewhere. He's expecting a call that will lead him to make a foolish decision. Whereas there is wisdom that will save him. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. Very important. You have a role to play and God has a part to play. That's what many of our fathers of faith call covenant. I like to use the word partnership for it. That it takes you. Please never forget this. Never forget this. Your success is not all up to God and it's not all up to you. You have a part to play and God has a part to play. And as far as God is concerned, he is more than faithful. You can trust him to play his part. That means the, the, the problem in the equation of success is not trying to coerce God to play his own part. It's to make sure that we understand what our roles 
and responsibilities are you getting my point i promised that i was going to touch on something two weeks ago let me just touch on it very briefly the gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom there is a difference they are both gospels but i need you to understand something the gospel of salvation is the gospel that reveals to you the sacrifice of jesus christ on the cross hallelujah it lets you know that christ came and he paid with his blood as an atonement for your sins and that if by faith you accept the free gift the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ the shedding of his blood his death and his resurrection that if by faith you open up your heart at once eternal life becomes yours as a gift are you getting my point now so under the gospel of salvation you do not do anything any man that tries to tell you that you do things in order to inherit salvation or to receive eternal life that's not true the bible says we are saved by grace and that not of works hallelujah lest any man should boast but then the problem is many people camp around the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is only an entrance it should open you up to other realities in the kingdom are you getting my point now and then you come into the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom reveals jesus as king not savior again and it reveals you not just as a child but as an ambassador it is the gospel of the kingdom that opens you up not just to your rights and privileges but to your responsibilities hallelujah the gospel of the kingdom helps you to understand that god did not just save you to sit down moving around and every time there's trouble you just say jesus you died for me i belong to you if you like don't save me and then we don't do anything so we throw all of the responsibility to jesus christ and we just say just sit down and enjoy yourself and let life work for you unfortunately that's not true it sounds so true brothers and sisters it sounds so spiritual but it's not the truth it's not an accurate interpretation of the thoughts of god there is the gospel of the kingdom and in the gospel of the kingdom god finds a man god empowers that man and god begins to reveal to that man that he god has a need that we were saved unto good works we were not saved by works but we were saved unto good works not unto laziness so you understand that there is a responsibility in the kingdom hallelujah it's very important for us to understand this when it comes to success it depends on you hallelujah so let's look at the concept of success very quickly um by the way let me celebrate two people um you have the photos media hallelujah i must appreciate these two great men of god they have shaped and molded my life i salute and i honor them in their absence or in their presence i'm not embarrassed they have mentored and built me they have imparted wisdom i cried for wisdom they are true apostles of wisdom lots of people make noise but see wisdom has fruits are you getting my point anyone can claim to be wise but there are fruits of wisdom and i honor these great servants of god the first of them is bishop david oyedeko i honor him in my life i salute him as an apostle of wisdom hallelujah i honor him and i appreciate god for the depth of wisdom and the depth of insight different people say all kinds of nonsense wherever i sit down and i hear you say anything wrong against him i will get up and walk out of there i don't care who you are and what you are saying i don't care what your thoughts are and what your perspectives are i salute these great men of god koinonia help me 
let's celebrate grace grace Hallelujah. I also celebrate a true apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. Oh, what a mentor. What a mentor. What a mentor. I honor him in his absence. I honor him in his presence. I honor his grace. I honor him with my life. I honor the investment of the spirit upon his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit down. God bless you. Let's get into the teaching very quickly. There is what you must know to take you from where you are now to where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Number one, let's examine the concept of success. What does it mean to be successful? I'll have to run. There is a lot to talk about tonight. What does it mean to be successful? Success means obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. Please write it. Very important. This is a school tonight. Success is obtaining or achieving or accomplishing a worthwhile goal. If you don't have anything to write, use the notepad on your phone. Please write something write something this is a school hallelujah place value on knowledge place value on information in heaven when the apostle was in heaven he said right right don't just hear right because there is only so much your mind can take hallelujah so what is success obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal one of the things that I've seen in my life and I've seen across different territories, especially in the continent of Africa and even in Nigeria, is that there are many sincere, please listen, many well-meaning Christians who may remain failures for the rest of their lives. Please listen. We're going to examine something very powerful tonight. Why is it that many Christians are failures? So many believers, so many tongue-talking Christians, prayer warriors, sincere Christians that have character, men who love God, very, very sincere people, honest, well-meaning believers, but they never get to accomplish or achieve anything. They never get to transform a generation. They never get to rise beyond the limitations that they found themselves in. Why is this so? Hallelujah. And I got to understand something very important and very powerful. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. I was asking the Lord this question and then one day the Lord showed me a scripture that blew my mind and then i heard one of these men of god sharing this thing again again and again the first person i had talking about this was dr mike mudok and then i had olumide emmanuel again talking about it please look up jeremiah 9 verse 24 but let him that glory had glory in this that he what understand it and know it me hold on why will the bible use i hope you understand that the 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 construction of scripture is very 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 detailed and very intentional he said let him glory that he knows me and then that he understands me not just that he knows me alone not just that he understands me and i said ah that's the point there is a difference between knowing God and understanding God. Are you getting my point now? The knowledge of God is what we call in koinonia intimacy. You understand, you, you know his presence, you can sense his presence. You're seeing transformations happening in your life. 
the anointing of the spirit of God is being felt strong upon your life that's as a result of the knowledge of God but when it comes to your success in life you must understand the ways of God the Bible says he showed his acts to the nation of Israel but unto Moses he showed his ways his principles the inner workings that produce those results that are seen so it's not enough to know God you must understand the principles of the kingdom and one of my obsessions is to open the body of Christ to understand the principles of the kingdom hallelujah Mike Modoc puts it this way he says there are two dimensions to the knowledge of God there is the person of Jesus Christ and there are the principles of Jesus Christ the person of Jesus Christ secures you for eternity the person of Jesus Christ secures your peace but the principles of Jesus Christ secure your success here and now are you getting the difference now very very profound and very important the principles of Jesus so all of the people who we consider to be successful and are not believers have embraced the principles of Jesus but they rejected his person they will never accept that these truths that they are working with that is producing this success has come from God they will never give him the glory they will never acknowledge him as the Lord of their life but they they change the names of these principles but you know that these are kingdom principles at work but then we have on the other hand the church we love God we know everything about God we know all the names of God from Genesis to Revelation but we have rejected the principles of Jesus so we have pastors we have leaders we have all kinds of people who never get to make any kingdom impact in their lifetime but tonight God is separating us through wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ there are laws and principles that must be understood and obeyed in order to be successful in this kingdom please write it down there are laws and principles that must first be understood and then obeyed in order for you to achieve true success has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender hallelujah it's not about age it's not about your advantage or your disadvantage jesus was born in nazareth and apparently the nazarenes had a testimony that they were failures can anything good come out of nazareth but the best gift came out of nazareth are you following me now so when it comes to success please and please deliver yourself from this lock mentality a lot of people just believe we have been taught by well-meaning pastors well-meaning preachers that whoever god wants to bless he will bless whoever god does not want to bless have you heard that please be delivered this night in the name of jesus christ it's impossible listen when you understand the laws of the kingdom you will know why god is love and you will know why god is just righteousness and justice the bible says are the foundations of his throne joshua chapter 1 verse 8 the ultimate equation for kingdom success many of us read it we just recite it but there is a powerful revelation joshua chapter 1 verse 8 there are laws there are principles that must be understood and must be obeyed in order to be successful listen let me tell you something please look up there are many people who hear what i'm saying right now and just make up their mind and say no forget it it's just nonsense we have seen people who don't know anything and god just bless them have you heard preachers like that i wasn't doing anything i was just sitting down and a blessing what is your concept of a blessing We are talking about socks. I mean sustained success that can be imparted to generations. And I'm not talking of money or finance necessarily. Hallelujah. Doing big things for the kingdom. 
accomplishing much for his majesty joshua 1 verse 8 this book that contains laws the laws of the kingdom many times when we hear law we are just thinking law old testament no 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 the laws of the kingdom were there before genesis 1 are you getting my point the laws of the kingdom are not the laws of the old testament no they have been there from the foundations of the earth they are the very principles that heaven is governed by shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shall meditate therein day and night that means do it consistently that thou mayest observe to what it's not enough to confess it's not enough to meditate there is a doing according to how many all not 90 percent the equation of success is so strict that 90 percent is still f for then after you have done this not during not before please help me read that last that that last uh, the, the the last clause there for then are you ready one to read for then thou shall make and thou shall have who will make his way he said you will make your way prosperous that means it is your responsibility if you want to remain at the level you are now are you getting my point now we keep blaming God on things that God has no business one of the things that I have learned in my life is the ability to accept responsibility it's so easy to blame our parents for the way we are right now right many young people we stand and have the gods and the effrontery to insult them and we say our parents they were careless they were this but look at how old you are now you've even forgotten that you are now 35 years doing the exact same thing you were complaining right from when you were 18 and you are still making you are making worse decisions because you are exposed to more opportunities and information many of us like to talk about the government you know people say the money in nigeria how can one person loot 170 million they would have shared it to all of us can i tell you something look up share the money in nigeria equally to everybody i give you 24 hours it will return back to the people that had it initially guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed for then shall thou make your ways what prosperous and you will have good success may god give us good success there is a difference between good success and bad success good success is the kind of success that exalts the name of christ keeps you in integrity and you can when you kill a man to be rich that's bad success are you getting what i'm saying when you sleep around for money that's bad success when you give bribes and tips in your office for promotion that's bad success the success of many people in nigeria has a cost upon it because it is bad success hallelujah let's continue very very important i want us to examine certain things very very quickly um let's look at jeremiah 6 verse 16. one other thing i want you to realize about success is that success is not coincidence success is not magic success is not luck there's no such thing as that a man said if you wake up and find yourself successful be sure you were not sleeping thus saith the lord stand in the ways and see and do what ask everybody say ask everybody say inquire everybody say pursue ask for the what that means those parts are already there you don't need to invent it 
You don't need to discover a road. I mean to try to invent a road that has been found. He said, as for the ancient path, where is the good way? It's only the good way that can give you good success. Is that true? And he said, and walk therein. You can ask and they can show you and you can sit down and still be looking. He said, when you find it, walk therein. What's the result? He said, you shall find rest for your souls. But what is the church saying? But they said, we will not walk. Is that not the testimony of many people? We will not walk. One day God will bless us. God is seeing me praying. You wait and see. And we keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Hallelujah. I come from a lineage of missionaries. My grandfather, they were the founding fathers and the trustees of the Church of Christ in Nigeria. You go to the history and you are checking you will see my mother when they were all small sitting there in the picture and my father too that my, my grandfather hallelujah my blood father was a baptist served god diligently with his life brothers and sisters if if there is any couple that i've seen in my life who are men of character and integrity that truly love god i can tell you my parents it, but it did not change the situation in my family. Are you getting what I'm saying? I knew times when my mother would lock the door, you would hear her shouting and crying and praying. And at a point I said, Kai God, but you self now. Wow. Ah, somebody is crying like this to you. What you do not know can destroy you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm going to share with us a few principles. Before I go there, let me just say something quickly. The difference between failure and success is the voice that you have chosen to trust. I must say this before we continue. The difference between your success in life or your failure is the voice that you have chosen to trust. It's not enough to just listen. The Bible said, be careful how you hear. You can hear a wrong voice and believe that voice for years to your detriment. The difference, I can never help you to become successful until I change the wrong voice you are listening to. Adam and Eve kept hearing the voice of God and as long as they heard the voice of God and walked in his ways, they were successful. The day they had what? Another voice. Is that true? Lucifer came with another voice and he misled them. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, it said, and they had the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? Hallelujah. And Adam, uh, that's three of, chapter 3 or 4. And he says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I had thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. What did God say? who told you that means you've started hearing another voice your success in life listen please is highly dependent on the voice you have chosen to trust not just here our decisions in life are based on the convictions that words have brought for us if i convince you right now that if you come and kneel down on this altar you will get breakthrough Will you be embarrassed doing it? You will just come and kneel down. Is that not true? If I convince you right now that if you slap Lawrence, your breakthrough will come guaranteed. As stupid as it sounds, you will find out that there are people who will come. Passionately, they say, oh, Lawrence, it's not like I'm a wicked person, but I need to. The whole body of Christ is moving at the frequency of convictions and words and the bible says there is as it were many voices and none of these voices are without effect that means the voice you permit to speak to you is the voice that molds your success unfortunately many of us in the body of christ have received not necessarily wrong voices but inaccurate voices not necessarily wrong but that the equations they have given us 
were not complete. So we grew up with convictions that are not thorough, not potent enough to deliver unto us the things that are required. And that's why God is helping someone tonight. I can never change your life until you are willing to change the voice, the convictions that you have trusted and kept. hallelujah i'm going to teach on three basic principles number one very important i'm not going to talk too deep in it number one if you want to be successful please listen we're going to talk about the principle of mentorship listen this has become such a controversial issue i have a series just for this and i trust that when god grants grace we're going to deal with it it's, it's been such a controversial issue in the body of Christ. There have been all kinds of imbalances about the concept of mentorship. Many people in their innocence have been misled into all kinds of junks, have been threatened by all kinds of wrong ideologies. But let me tell you a few things about mentorship. Very important. First Samuel 3 verse 12 to 13. Please help us media. We need to be very fast. Mentorship is a very important aspect of our lives. There are two ways to learn in life. Number one, mistakes. Number two, mentors. There are two ways to learn in life. You learn through your mistakes or you learn through your mentors. Hallelujah. Mentorship is very, very important. Please pay attention to what I'm sharing tonight if you ever are interested in success in the kingdom. 3 verse 12 and 13. 3 verse 12 and 13. 1 Samuel 3 verse 12 and 13. Thank you Holy Spirit. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Alright, let's read together. One to read. And in that day, I will perform against Eli all things which i have spoken concerning his house when i begin i will also make an end verse 13 why he said for i have told him that i will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not and he restrained them not there are two ways to learn in life mistakes and the ministry of mentors is so so important second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 very powerful scripture please if you listen to what i'm sharing just three laws that i share tonight it will dramatically change your life second timothy 2 verse 2 everyone please read one to read of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to what teach others also so what i had i commit to faithful men and those faithful men teach and commit others this is how the chain of success works in the kingdom a mentor is not just one you submit to and admire that's what a lot of people do in the body of Christ and they call mentorship. So wrong. A mentor is not just one that you submit to. It's not just one that you admire. A mentor is not just a man who instructs you. A mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey. A mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey. Not whose instructions you hear. Not whose instructions you discuss. Not whose instructions you pray about. Are you seeing the nonsense that are done in the body of Christ? All in the name of mentorship. And many people never get blessed. You do not see the signature of what they attempt to be representing. Hallelujah. A mentor is not just a person you submit to. It's not just a person you admire. Oh, I admire this person. 
and that means the person is your mentor impossible a mentor is not even the person you sit under it's not just the person you hear a mentor is one whose voice you have come to trust as the voice of God in your life this is very very dangerous if you understand it you won't just get into all this flamboyancy that people do in the name of mentorship and confuse themselves into perdition a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you follow and obey a mentor is not one whose instructions you discuss please get this get this get this this is a powerful um, principle about mentorship a mentor is not one who talks to you and you say okay I've had you let me go and pray about it you've had people say all those kinds of junk they say I need to go and pray and confirm you do not trust his voice there is no man in scripture who truly listened to the instruction of a mentor and missed it it's impossible from Genesis to Revelation you read it is someone getting blessed tonight very important let me share with you a few principles about mentorship that will bless us oh thank you Jesus someone is getting blessed in this place in the name of Jesus Christ a mentor is a shortcut to your future mentorship is shortcut to your future experience is the slowest way to learn experience is the slowest way to learn in life if you think everything you are going to get in life there are all kinds of arrogant people who will never listen to any man you don't have any man's books you are reading there are no tips i share the holy spirit for myself experience is the slowest way to achieve it's like going to lagos by trekking you will arrive but you may arrive dead hallelujah a mentor is your coach he tells you what you are doing right and he tells you what you are doing wrong a mentor is not your friend a mentor is not your confidant you see where a lot of people miss it please you neglect this principle I'm sharing just know that you have signed an agreement with failure guaranteed a mentor is not your best friend your best friend loves you the way you are hallelujah but a mentor loves you too much to leave you the way you are this is the difference between a mentor and your best friend your best friend loves you you will make all kinds of blunders and your best friend will say it's all right all things work together for them that love god who are the called because we want your your friend wants to have that relationship and that rapport so they will forbear a lot of things they will overlook a lot of things so your friend you can be in a room with your friend and be breaking a lot of laws and your friend can forbear the day you leave your friend and go to another place that's where you see the gravity of your blunders because your friend has is somebody understanding what i'm saying there are many of you that you think you are doing very well because around you are people who can tolerate you to death but mentorship reveals your weakness and provokes you to change a mentor has nothing nothing absolutely nothing to lose by your stubbornness or your lack of listening hallelujah it's not this kind of thing that okay I like this lady and she does something wrong and I want to correct her. I say ah let me correct this lady now and let this thing backfire and say okay no problem God you are that's not mentorship brothers and sisters that's called friendship are you getting my point a man who can look at you and rebuke you and correct you a man who your success does not come as a big deal to him are you getting my point now help us holy spirit is someone getting blessed listen let me tell you something wisdom does not necessarily come with age you must understand this a mentor is somebody who can correct you 
I want to say something that will bless you right now. Correction from your pastor or your leader or your mentor or if you are working, your superior is God's protection to you from your next tragedy. Are you getting my point? When, when your leader or your boss or your superior corrects you, it is God using them to save you from the next blunder and tragedy you are about to make. He said, my son, pay attention. Don't just hear. There is a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is just sound. Listening is hearing with the intention of obedience. That's the difference between listening and hearing. There are many people who hear all kinds of things. I have been more blessed from the men of God and geos of many ministries than even the workers in those ministries. They are there walking. They keep hearing, but they never listen. Is God challenging someone tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Mentorship is impartation. Mentorship is impartation. A man imparts his grace, his wisdom. Mentorship is learning through the pain of another person. You are learning through someone else's pain. He already made blunders that you are about to make. And he can save you decades of failure and recovery. If only you will listen. Please make sure you are writing. In one hour, brothers and sisters, look at me. In one hour... I can read somebody's book and gain an experience that took him 30 years of pain and mistakes again and again. Are you getting my point? In one hour, I can, for paying 500 naira, pastor, I can receive someone's book and sit down and gain wisdom that took someone 30 years. When I read Rediscovering the Kingdom years ago, the book just came out. I made sure that I ordered it. I wrote a letter to Mike Mo uh, Miles Munro and I told him, I've been blessed by your ministry. May God bless and honor you. And he replied me. He said, may God bless you. Use the book. I got that book. I paid so much. When it came into the country, I made sure I was one of the first people that got it. And I sat down and he said it took him 30 years of the dealings of the spirit. But within one day, you can get wisdom from the pain of a man. Is somebody getting blessed? Do you want to have to be the one to pay every price by yourself? Your lifetime is not enough to correct yourself until you make it right. Is someone getting blessed in this place? Thank you, Jesus Christ. A mentor is one who knows already what you need to know. A mentor is one that already knows what you need to know. Not one that is struggling to know what you need to know. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained, not are obtaining. A mentor is one who knows what you need to know. Whose mentorship do you treasure and value? That's what God is asking you. Whose voice have you been listening to to shape your life? I can tell you that this is the reason why you are where you are right now. Whose voice do you treasure and value? Very, very important. Mentorship is so, so important. As far as the kingdom is concerned very very important listen i want to teach you how to be blessed from a mentor's life there is an attitude hallelujah this is where a lot of people are missing it please listen i wrote it down here and let me just read it i said to be blessed from a mentor's life you must receive the person of that man of god not just the message the person 
I see a lot of people who say forget about the person. Just receive the message and leave him. That's junk and nonsense. Are you getting my point? You must first receive the person of that man of God. I know a lot of people who talk wrong things against men of God and great leaders. They sit down in conversations that tear them into pieces. And then they sit down and want to attempt to get the treasure in them. It never works that way. You cannot sit down and tear a man into pieces and believe that you will receive from that man. The Lord does not work that way. The first requirement is that you must receive the person. You must be able to trust the voice of God. Mentors are not perfect people. They are people who have knowledge. They are people who have experience. They are people who have grace. If you are not if you if you do not have the capacity to overlook a man's limitations i'll never forget one time i went somewhere and some people were discussing about benny Hinn. shortly when the divorce happened is someone getting blessed tonight they were talking about benny Hinn, and i had the people just shouting and they were saying i'm disappointed in benny Hinn. imagine how can a great man and i just kept quiet i was listening to them We were watching a program and they were just talking, tearing this man down, saying, this generation self, now what is happening? You don't even trust anybody again. And I listened to them. And later on, I called the person. I said, how could you be this unwise? Hallelujah. Over an information you do not even understand. You are not Benny Hinn's PA. You don't know anything. It's easy to sit down and discuss about people, isn't it? It's easy to sit down and watch people play football since there's World Cup. Let me use that example. And say, ah, Nigeria, you did score. Shame on you. That heading, if you just headed, it's easy. Talk is cheap. Until you get to that place, you will see how easy or how difficult it is. It's easy to see a pastor leading his church and sit down and say, Kai, I don't like this. These guys are so boring. This blah, blah, blah. This pastor's wife is not even very, very anointed. Why is she quoting this and that? until the day you have the opportunity you will pray and preach every sermon you can preach in one month and that's when you will know that pastoring is not child's play you will fish you will copy the teaching of every man of god till your congregation can even tell you the message and you will find out that it's just it's just february then you will begin to respect every preacher that preaches every week that you stand on your stage and say ah but is that scripture correct it's easy to stand and judge. Ida Hosa said, never criticize a man until you have done two times what the man has done once. And I listened to them. And I called the person. I said, no, don't do this. If you talk like this, you will never receive the grace upon his life. And I told him, you need to go to God and say, Lord, I am sorry. hallelujah you must receive the person of that man of god number two you must trust his voice you must trust that his voice represents the voice of god in your life please listen to this i'm not teaching you error nobody obeyed instructions from a man of god in scripture and went to perdition if he's a true man of god You must be willing to submit to his instructions as coming from God. Listen, you never get a mentor give you instructions and you say, I've had you, sir. Let me go and think about it. That's nonsense. Read your scriptures. If you trust that the voice of this man of God is the voice of God, you prove it by absolute loyalty. This looks very childish, but I will show you why so many people do not receive i remember one time when abuja and this particular great man of god we just sat down listening to him and when when i saw that man i kept quiet for hours this man was talking some of my colleagues were just making noise and i kept quiet i was listening to this man and he was looking at me eyeball to eyeball and at a point he said what kind of person are you don't you talk and i kept quiet I was just listening 
listening and later on he cornered me outside and he said i know what i've seen in the spirit about you pray for me i said i'll pray in my room not here he said lay hands on me i said no i won't do that many foolish young preachers say yes sir you are celebrating my kneel down let me show you what anointing can do see that no this is why many people do not let me tell you success is not about business or job if you do it it accounts for less than 10 percent of the equation of success if you neglect these laws you neglect it to your detriment praise the lord is someone listening it is only when you have accepted the voice and the person of this man then his message his grace and his anointing will be effective in your life it's amazing how people come and sit down in a meeting listen to their men of god and immediately they come out they sit down in forums and try to discuss and tear everything into pieces and just sit down and say man oh boy that thing this man is saying this is nonsense i remember one man who was criticizing mike Mudok and he was even warning me he said be careful this seed seed man everything is seed every what sort of man is that you will stand and say they should sow a seed into his life i said that's all you saw about this man that's everything you saw about this man i said time will tell years later i saw him in the midst of financial crisis he was reading one of mike Mudok's book why people do not receive their financial harvest See, let me tell you something about life. <laughs> life can humble any level of arrogance. It's only a matter of time. There are realities that is like a wall. You will box it till you get tired. At that point, hallelujah, Bible says that David cried and cried until he had no strength. He came to himself. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Mentorship creates seven things. And let me just put it, like I said, we have a series and we'll talk on it more extensively. Mentorship creates seven things in your life when you embrace that ministry. Number one, it creates impartation. Number two, it creates guidance. Number three, it creates access. It creates impartation. It creates guidance. It creates access. Number four, it creates endorsement. Number five, it creates promotion. Or a platform for promotion. Number six, mentorship creates a platform for wisdom. Seven, mentorship creates speed in your life. Take note of this. It was through the wisdom of a dear woman of God that I respect who called me one day. I used to talk about men of God and I would mention their names. And with my zeal, I would just be talking and the woman called me one day. And said, my son, you are a young man and you have a very long journey to go. God is going to use you greatly. Never criticize a man of God. You are too young to know everything around a man of God's life. Make sure from today. And I said, mommy, God is my witness and in your presence. This is the last time I will ever open my mouth and talk about a man of God mentioning his name. I will challenge wrong doctrines, but not to talk about a man of God. Wisdom. I would have destroyed an opportunity in the height of what God will be doing in Koinonia. One day now, I will make a foolish decision, maybe on air. Are you seeing that now? This is how great people, I'm showing you the wisdom and the blessings of mentorship. There are many of you who have seen people and you disregard them because you think a mentor is only one who has your kind and level of anointing. There are wisdoms that are greater than the realm of anointing. Levels of wisdom. Hallelujah. I learned silence from one of our boards of trustees i notice every time you are talking to that man he will keep quiet you will talk and say all kinds of things and he will keep quiet i didn't used to be like that especially if god has revealed to me what what your problem is 
before you talk i said please save save us the time and he taught me the art of listening that it is wisdom to listen to a man see that thank you jesus christ you don't decide or choose your mentor let me shock you now <laughs> mm. mentorship just like your assignment is discovered you discover them and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons in your life we have a series on that and i will teach you you don't sit down and choose your mentor because you will never choose a man who will flog you are you getting my point you are smart enough mentorship is like your assignment why will i choose a man who when people are celebrating me and saying apostle joshua Selman, you look at me and say young man no problem but there is more work to be done keep that all of those accolades and let's work do you think i naturally will like that kind of person mentorship is like assignment you don't choose that's why a lot of people choose somebody and he rebukes them he said oh boy i am seeing that you like women say, ah, what sort of embarrassment is this and he moves from the name you used to call him maybe man of god or daddy or papa he say sir please ah i don't like what kind of thing is this i am a prophet or i am an apostle you're an apostle i'm an apostle <laughs> hallelujah how can you tell me i like women me and you don't even see me around he says i'm telling you you like women go and work on it say no i don't like this guy let me go to this other one he said you are okay just believe push yourself and then the day something backfires truly you find yourself sleeping around you will now get up and say goodness and this man saw it i told one of my friends something years ago immediately i looked at him i said you have a lot of tendencies and i want you to work at it at that point he even got offended that day but after like four or five years he called me one day he said can you remember something that you told me he said honestly i am embarrassed to even believe that i'm a victim of this i told him no there's no point for embarrassment once you acknowledge something change look let me tell you let me tell you mentorship is so powerful somebody can sit down and look at you while you are bubbling with all your zeal he can see all the tendencies oh i'm a millionaire let money come oh kingdom you will see what will happen and the person says make sure you take out time to start praying because i see money destroying you this is not word of knowledge this is this is the excellency of pain and wisdom and experience it's amazing how people come for counseling pastor they come on monday for counseling and they are now coming to seek my advice and they just come they sit down good afternoon sir i want to seek your advice and for 30 minutes they are just running their mouth and talking and i'm keeping quiet listening to them and after 30 minutes they say i feel very relieved and i say let's pray let's pray They say, sir, and, and you know the Bible says in the book of this and that and that and that and that. A lady, I remember a lady came for counseling and I like putting wine on top of my fridge. And she looked at it and said, I hope this is not alcoholic wine. And I just looked at the lady. She believed that was funny. And then I looked. It means you don't trust. You believe that there's something I'm doing hidden. If I stand and we preach and we make altar call and we talk about standing in holiness and truth and you see wine on my table and you look and I'm feeding you spiritually if you cannot trust that the wine that is on my table is non-alcoholic how can you trust that I'm not sleeping around and moving in integrity how can you trust that I'm not going to get anointing from somewhere are you getting the point now so many people have made themselves failures and we keep blaming God Whereas there are irrefutable principles. No man outgrows the need to be guided in his life. No man. At whatever level. No man. You discover your mentors. And you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons of your lives. Mentors are not necessarily perfect people.
Please, is someone getting blessed tonight? Mentors are not necessarily perfect people. They are people who have come, who you have come to trust the word and in the instructions of God in their mouth. Now look at me. There is an attitude that you must have every time you are before a great man. Please listen. This is not human worship. When you sit before a mentor or before a great man, only ask questions and listen. When you sit before a great man, that's not time for discussion. A lot of arrogant people get access to men of God that other people are dying to see. And they sit down and for 30 minutes they are running their mouths and talking nonsense. They are saying we are colleagues in the ministry and we are just talking. Or we are colleagues in this. You sit down with a woman who has trained eight children and you are a young lady getting married two weeks. You are already talking to her about pregnancy. Say this and that and that. I read it in this book. This woman gave birth to eight children. Out of the eight there were twins and the woman is just looking at you like this yes you went to school i didn't go to school and you sit down you went there and say mommy what advice can you give me now that i'm going into a marital home and you just look and you are wondering after all she was poor i went to school i i, I just returned from america and the woman is just looking at you you believe this woman is too old or naive to understand what you are going through. or maybe a lady is pregnant for instance and maybe she wants to seek advice from a woman because of maybe any complication. Two months, three months into the pregnancy. And you now look at her and say, Mommy, is there any way you can help me? Eight children. Eight children. And you believe is such a level of arrogance. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to honor and recognize greatness when I see it. When I sit before men who have grace, when I sit before men who mentor my life, I, some, I don't even sit on the chair sometimes. God is my witness. I will sit down and my phone, I'm just waiting. Every time you see results in a man's life, there is more than what you can see. Are you getting my point? If it is the equation of God, there is more than you can see. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me. I will never forget a young man who came from Kaduna. I remember the guy came and sat down and said, um, there's something wrong with my life. And I told the guy, I need to pray for you. He said, no, that's not the issue. And he was talking and saying all kinds of things. And then I was looking. Immediately he entered. I saw a spirit tormenting this guy. I said, let me, <laughs> I need to pray for you. It happened one time with another lady again from a ministry. I will not mention the name. You know, she came and was saying all kinds of things. And this guy was talking, talking, talking. And he said, come on, that he even needs to ask me a question about this issue of deliverance. There's something. I said, please, I'm not here to argue with you. There are so many people sitting outside. Can I pray for you? The last thing this guy remembered was that he knelt down on the floor. And the protocol people, when he got up, he had scattered everywhere. Protocol people were helping him. The guy went back to his ministry. He has a ministry. Ah! He, he sent a text. He said, what is all this? And then he came. They came for Koinonia together with some of his, his followers and the people. And it opened him up to another reality. What you see is not all there is. There can be a lot more I have taken challenges to men that are greater than me. And to me, those challenges look like mountains. But when I take it there, I, they just look and say, Oh, is this it? Do this, do that. This is a simple issue now. And I'm like, goodness, how come I didn't think about this? 
just like some people come with challenges and they are complaining they are shouting they won't let you talk they say you cannot imagine where will my school fees come from hey and they are closing next tomorrow or whatever and you are saying calm down I say, where will, do you know what it means to raise 20,000 calm down whereas maybe God has already instructed you to pay the school fees just calm down it's comforting when you can find a man who can walk over what looks like a mountain for you. I cannot tell you how, many, how people come with all kinds of challenges and they come maybe for counseling. And you can see that these things have prolonged for years. And as soon as they enter, I just start smiling because I know in less than five minutes, this will be over. Whereas you can sit down arrogantly and remain there forever. Hallelujah. Help us, Holy Spirit. There is always a price to pay. Please listen. There is always a price to pay to follow an uncommon mentor. There is always a price. It will cost you to follow a true mentor. Adaptation is the key to enjoying the ministry of a mentor in your life. Look at me. Never expect a mentor to adjust to your life you are joking if you cannot adjust to the person's life i'll never forget when i went to abuja one time to see a particular man of god four days i had not seen him four days and god was my witness that i never complained i said lord thank you it's a it's a privilege this is how people to wait for counseling to see me and they are not complaining so i have no rights to complain there are people who call me, hello, hello, this and that and that. And I tell them, okay, we have a conversation. I say, please, I don't have that time. I can't wait. I'm busy. Ah, you are coming to see lecturers, professors, great men. And a young man just comes with his sad jeans. Is there any way we can just see sharp, sharp? Please, I have things to do. Pack your load and go back to your trouble and remain there. There is a price. Never forget this. There is a price to pay for mentorship. There is a price. Apostle Johnson Suleiman was talking and he said something. He said that um, every time he called um, um, Papa Ayo or Richard Jaffa, you know, he would call him and then he would say, Johnson, how are you? And that's how he would leave the phone there. He would be doing something. Johnson Suleiman said, that's how he would wait. You can't complain. You can't argue. You can't off the phone. That's how you wait. And later on, he said, just a minute, I'm coming back. And you'll continue doing something else. Some of you would have been offended and angry. And say, do you not know I'm an apostle too? And then as a while, you say, okay, what is it? A mentor is not one who calls you apostle Joshua Selman. You should be able to say, Joshua, come. You see that? Sometimes we are used to the accolades of men. I am apostle. Even if you say pastor, they say, am I pastor? Is A the same thing as P? I'm not, I mean, you better call the correct thing. May God help us. Because if you get this principle alone, many of us tonight, this is the key to the next level of your life. You have neglected the ministry of great men. There is nothing embarrassing about acknowledging that there are people who have gone ahead of you. Praise the Lord. Pursuit is the only proof of passion. There are people who get angry. Maybe they want to see me. And maybe we are away on a trip. And then they are angry. And they call. They say, I've been calling you for two days. And I say, I'm sorry. What's the issue? They say, please, I've been trusting God for something in my life. And you just finished quarreling me. You have been calling me for two days. I'm not responding. Whereas maybe I was preaching. Whereas maybe I was having time with God. You know, please and please, brothers and sisters, it takes humility to rise to the top. If you are not ready to be humble, get set to remain at that level. Hallelujah. I shared with you my story on how I was already preparing to go to the U.S. to go and scrub the toilet of Charles and Francis Hunter before they died. 
I was going for a conference, but my mission was to go and scrub the toilet. And I, ins I made up my mind that when I got there, I would insist. I'll tell them my job is to scrub the toilet for two solid weeks, scrubbing the toilet every day. There are two ways to receive from a man of God your seed and your service. Your seed and your service. You can serve your way into an anointing. You can sow your way into an anointing. Avoid familiarity. I beg you, Koinonia, listen to me. Let my conscience be clear before God that I taught you this. Avoid familiarity. There are people in my life, our daddy prof is here, and the way, the way that, that prof respects me so much, it even makes me embarrassed. I never, never, never will take his grace and his ministry and his wisdom for granted. Never ever. Hallelujah. Many of you do not understand the secret. Listen, please listen. This is where you may be missing a lot of things. You can be with a man of God for a long time. Never forget who you are talking to. It's not enough to talk to people. Never forget who. Jesus looked at them and said, Before your father Abraham was, I am. And they said, ah, What are you saying? Never forget who you are talking to. This is not human worship. It's the law. These are the ancient parts that made people great. I never get familiar. There are all kinds of men of God. Something, something happened yesterday and we're having a conversation. One of the top protocol people in one of the reputable ministries, I won't call their name just to honor the person. He had been trying to reach me and he had called and called and called and called and somehow the call could not get through. And you know, he looked at his status and he was offended. He is really an honorable person. You see, I mean, the direct like PA of one of the great men of God in the country. And he's been trying to reach me. And for whatever reason, when he got to our protocol department, we were in, we were in, in, in a meeting in, um, in Quara State. And so we could not attend to him. And then eventually he got offended. And then when he called, you know, he was speaking and he sounded a bit arrogant. But when he told me who he was, I would have said, Oga, oh you have told me who you are. Let me tell you who I am too. I just told him, I said, I'm sorry, sir. I really apologize. I am sorry. We do not mean to disrespect the grace or the office that you're working. We apologize on behalf of myself, on behalf of the ministry. Immediately, the man too said, I'm sorry. It's not like I just meant to talk like that. It's just that you know this and that and that and that. Never be embarrassed to honor greatness. When a great man rebukes you, shut up. Whether he's right or wrong, keep quiet. Don't get up and say, I'm justifying myself. What is all this human worship? After all, it is God. Continue and see how far it will take you. When an elderly person rebukes me, when someone who has gone ahead of me rebukes me, all I say is, thank you, sir. I'm grateful for the opportunity. You see, many of you don't have the opportunity to see the way these things happen because they happen in the secret place. And so you just believe that every time we are just standing boss, 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 boss. Oh, I wish it were so. I wish it were so. I wish it were so. Praise the Lord. Number two, principle number two. Let's hurry up. Goodness, time is gone. The law of value. I'm talking about your assignments now. You want to be successful? Please listen to me. This will probably be one of the greatest revelations you've heard about your assignment. I want you to listen. Your assignment is called the law of value. Hebrews 10 verse 7, please. Hebrews 10 verse 7. God is changing someone's life here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 verse 7. I like us to read it. One, two, read.
lo i come in the volume of the book as it is what it has been written your assignment i have come to execute that which has been written write a few points about your assignment number one everything created on the earth solves a problem we taught this in the school of ministry in uh, uh, the course called personal transformation everything created not these exact words but then something similar everything created on the earth solves a problem that means everything created has a divine assignment everybody say i have a divine assignment whether you know it or not is irrelevant just say i have a divine assignment because after this teaching tonight in the name of the lord you will stop escorting others in destiny and start making a definite progress as far as your assignment is concerned there are so many people escorting others jacob had a prophetic grace that he never used until at the point of his death and he began to prophesy and see into his children and speak over them every man in the earth is a working solution to a problem everybody in the earth is a working solution to a problem say i am a working solution to a problem yes your existence proves that there was a problem and god sent you to solve it and brothers and sisters fulfilling your destiny is solving that problem for your generation many have died without solving that problem and god had to take their the problems and transfer to other people as a double mandate upon them because some other people were not faithful the problems you solve decides your reward never forget this money is not a miracle money is not magic money is a formula it's a reward for solving problems i can look at your financial level today and i can tell you you are where you are proportionate to the problems you have solved that's why you will pay a gate man ten thousand right but you will pay a manager five hundred thousand what is the difference the problems they are solving the manager is under ac he's wearing suit he has a chef but you are still paying him five hundred thousand the gate man is outside there's no ac in his small room but you are paying him ten thousand you get angry and switch the people let them switch roles for two weeks and see what happens to that corporation let the gate man become the ceo give him all the files to sign and all the decisions to make and then you will see the way everything will nose dive within two weeks so the problem that you solve is what decides your significance god does not decide your significance is god's desire for everybody he said you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood but you decide your significance there is no reason to envy any man there is no reason to be jealous every one of us has in us the ability to solve problems and the degree of the problems that you solve decides your significance there are so many men of god angry at at crowd and they criticize crowd and they say forget it crowd does not mean anything a man can leave his state with so many churches and ministries there and travel a great distance to come and meet a man of god they perceive can be able to solve their problems let me tell you you become a money magnet when you master the art of solving problems men will pay you with their life is someone learning something tonight the problem you solve brothers and sisters decides your your reward i'm ministering the word right now i'm solving a problem it's a spiritual problem are you seeing that anybody who says preachers should not be blessed does not know what he's saying whenever you solve a problem according to the kingdom there is a reward whether you sell it or you give it free this is the only reason why i am not charging you for listening is that true because the jehovah jireh of my life who made this law in place will never leave me hungry you want money you want prosperity what problem are you solving 
whose problem are you solving are you seeing why the wealth of an armed robber is wrong because an armed robber points a gun he's not solving any problem but he wants to be rewarded prosperity is not a mystery brothers and sisters the problems you solve decide your significance when you solve a problem you create a divine debt d-e-b-t you create a divine debt it's like when you solve problems here on earth god is like making god i mean god owes you let me put it that way your assignment is decided by god but is discovered by you let's hurry up your assignment in life is decided by god but it is discovered by you jeremiah chapter one he began to speak to the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i called you and i ordained you to be a prophet is someone getting blessed now right the most important revelation you need to have about your assignment is what your uniqueness is your lifting is not in your similarity with others it is your difference your uniqueness there are many preachers in nigeria there are many preachers in zaria there are many preachers in kaduna what makes my ministry different what makes my ministry to the body of christ different what listen concentrate on your uniqueness not your similarity when it comes to purpose your uniqueness becomes your edge so if you are selling recharge card brother b is selling recharge card what is your difference what is that distinguishing factor that's what gives you an edge oh hallelujah i thank god for his wisdom how do you discover your assignment let's write it very quickly how do you discover your assignment number one what you hate is a clue to what you have been called to solve write it what you hate passionately is a clue that you have been anointed to solve it anger is the seed for change whatever gets you angry and agitated is what you were designed to change i hate ignorance i hate the effect of poverty on people i hate it with a passion i hate ignorance of the principles of god i hate the fact that people do not recognize the lordship of christ and these things have constructed my passion they have built the framework of my teachings what agitates you take note of the pain and the things that annoy you write very quickly two things that really agitate you that every time you see it you cry and you wish for change there is an anointing there there is always an anointing in the place of pain pain is the birthplace for genuine anointing thank you jesus christ identify your highest point of anger identify your highest point of anger there is something that agitates you when you see people go through it when you see your family members go through it something in you cries that's the anointing of the spirit hallelujah when moses saw the egyptians suffering something in him started rising up because there was a deliverer in him are you getting my point now to an extent that he killed somebody Have you been ignoring your pain? Do you know that in your pain is the voice of the Spirit? God has been speaking to you that you have been anointed for this reason. There are many of us, God has, has anointed us to be saviors. He has brought us in different mountains to do mighty things for the kingdom. Are you seeing? But we have refused. We have ignored. Please let me have your attention. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit is just doing his thing. God has anointed us in different ways. Take note of your pain. Take note. 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number two, what do you love to talk about most in your life? Oh, that's a clue to your assignment. What do you love to talk about? There are many of you, you sit down five minutes, you have already seen the clothes everybody's wearing in Koinonia. There is grace there. Don't let anybody preach you out of it. There are some of you, when you see children, they can even flog you because of children. There is grace. Your passions, your passion. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon your passion, I remember when I was in secondary school, I would give everything. The little money that I'll have, I will share it and give everybody. They will buy meat pie, buy everything, and I will suffer like a fool. But it was a passion I could not help. There are many families who build houses and just keep it and say, when a man of God comes to town, let him come and stay. Have you seen people like that? There, is, there are passions. It's just that many of us have not been trained to honor our passions. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I will study my passions and I take my passions as a voice, as the voice of God speaking over my destiny. What is the conversation that excites you? There are conversations that when you start in my presence, I'm going to sleep or send you away. I guarantee you. Even if you mention Jesus in the middle of the conversation. But there are things that excite me. Is it not amazing how somebody can be watching maybe a fashion show, passionately, and you are sleeping and snoring? The interest is just not there. Whereas you put Benny in and I can be watching a crusade and I'm watching, I'm struggling with sleep. I'm nodding but I'm, I'm focused. And I say, what is this stress? Sleep. There is something. It's like fire in your bones. Have you been responding to your passions? When you find your assignment, you have found your reward system in life. When you find your assignment, brothers and sisters, you have signed exit out of a world of failure and poverty and mediocrity. And I mean what I'm saying. When you truly find your assignment, when the Spirit takes over your soul, when the Spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul your assignment must become your obsession brothers and sisters you will never excel in any area that has not become an obsession for you your assignment must become your obsession. And let me challenge you with one more thing before we round up this assignment issue. Listen to me. There must be a theme that, that defines the entire scope of your life. Let me tell you what that means. Every time you mention Aura Roberts, what comes into your heart? Healing. Is that true? Benny Hinn, healing. Is that true? Billy Graham, evangelism. J.J. Okocha. Is that true? If I mention your name and nothing comes to my mind, your difference has not been refined enough. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? When you say Tiger Woods, golf. Right? Tyra Banks, fashion people see them all smiling praise God if your life's mission cannot be summarized in one word you do not know it you can say my life's mission is, is to bring the rescue the, sh the, the lost sheep you know from all the wilderness look all of that long story there must be a theme that you can live for and die for hallelujah now I want to tell you something very powerful take note of opportunities in your life 
everything that rises from God camouflages as opportunities take note of opportunities opportunities help you to reveal discover and explore your assignment many of us do not know that God speaks through opportunities God never told David to kill Goliath he saw an opportunity and he saw that he had been equipped to maximize that opportunity and he took advantage of that opportunity into an unending world he got a wife for free he got wealth for free because he maximized an opportunity and i want to tell you something god speaks again through favor this is how you know that you have been called in an area never stay in an area where there is no favor it's a sign that god is not there even in the prison joseph was still favored that's a sign that god is with you please and please make up your mind to follow the path of favor there are many of us struggling in areas where it's obvious god has been using the language of favor or otherwise to speak to you favor everybody say favor god speaks to you through favor never stay in a place where there is no favor the next thing you need to know about your assignment is that your assignment is geographical please get this you are not sent everywhere oh lord may tell you in a vision i'm sending you to the nations that is a pregnant statement because you will raise other people who will get to the nations no single man will conquer the whole world you are sent to a person or a group of people you will always be celebrated when you get to the people where your anointing has been sent to bless stop trying to seek for recognition or approval everywhere god has not sent me to everybody it is good for me to understand that god has sent me to a people anytime you get to a place where you have been sent they will receive your anointing there are many people struggling in regions that god has not sent them they are trying to heal the sick they are trying to do everything forcing healing ministries forcing evangel they have run the whole ministry into death they are trying to organize crusades there is no grace there never forget that your assignment has its geography and isaac sold in that land not in any land abraham come i will take you to a place that is where i will bless you brothers and sisters after this program use this weekend especially for those who are trusting god for a place where you will stay you must never sit down and allow job to decide your geography is a costly decision are you getting what i'm saying you must flog it out go on a fast for one day or two days if you can't fast take fruits or something light and flog it out with destiny and say oh god i know that my prosperity and my blessing is tied to geography let me tell you something i come from plateau state and the little years i've had serving god and ministry that state never opened up to me they were never opened and prepared to receive of my grace and it bothered me because i was blessing other people and blessing other states and i said lord what is it about this place this is my own very place let me be a blessing to them and god kept telling me again and again they are not ready to receive your anointing there is too much familiarity and do you know what happened the the city of Joss opened up for me through my teachings they never even knew i was the one it was students from Futmina and yola and all of that including my neighbor i mean neighbors that we grew up together they took my teaching my own uncle my own uncle listened to one of my teachings and started crying and then got to find out i was the one and he cried and said my own son is in ministry and is changing the world and i'm here dying and so that that familiarity they received the teaching not knowing it was me 
and then when they had now respected the anointing then god opened up to them it is this person are you getting the point now that's the reason why although many of you are anointed you find out that every time you get home you just feel ordinary that presence of the anointing never comes because you are the last born you are the child everybody knows even if you tell them god is saying they say shut up what do you know about god but the day they are ready to receive your anointing they will be amazed at the dimension that they will enter your assignment is geographical thank you jesus christ your difference will be rewarded when you are geographically accurate listen listen please listen look up look up before you write let me explain something to you um come sam how many of you agree and believe that sam is a powerful worshiper but do you know as gifted as sam can be sam can be in a territory where his grace is not celebrated and appreciated how many of you have been in a place you know it's not pride that god has honored you there are graces there are giftings but you are in a territory where nobody can celebrate your grace and god takes you even for a moment to a place and goodness even you you are shocked you never knew that you were that great until you got to that place and you see people celebrating that grace has it happened to anybody you keep singing and when you sing they just tell you go and sit down and you get to a place where people say sorry sir are you living right now please can you come and minister in our church which hotel are you say say they, they kept me in one car they say please come 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 make make arrangement make and you are saying goodness look let me tell you there are things that people do for me when i go for ministrations and i'm amazed i'm almost saying oh god please let this thing not become human worship and i'm i'm shocked honestly when i'm in my hotel room i'm now looking i'm like goodness ah i will discover every other thing that is left that i've not discovered <laughs> oh when you are in the geography of your assignment men will pay you in a way that will shock you they will pay for any and everything to receive your grace stop concentrating on places where you are tolerated there are many of you you are everybody tolerates you everywhere there is a place where your grace can be celebrated and i tell you part of my life's goal as a leader in this ministry is to harness the giftings of people and to celebrate it and to make them great sam god bless you when we went to quara state sam ministered and he led worship he was so powerful when it was the time i don't know how many times he has seen himself as a man of god goodness that was the first time i saw sam moving very powerfully in the anointing i mean it was time to minister to the worshipers and you could see the anointing and the grace and these people were receiving after the ministration or oh, everybody almost every i think everybody except they were teasing yerima and they say it was only yerima they didn't come to meet him for counseling because he was a media person he was just snapping but everybody from protocol to every one of the people there were piles of people waiting for counseling you know what tells what that tells me those people have recognized their grace but they may come back home and you can just look at them sam how are you and you just shake him and say sam can you please come we have one small fellowship can you just sing one or two choruses <laughs> celebrate greatness when you enter its presence don't be embarrassed don't pretend it's not there I always celebrate them they know it i celebrate the workers that's why we organize dinner at the end of the year for them to honor them to bless them and i use the opportunity to tell them i am grateful it's easy for people to see what god is doing in this ministry and say it's joshua selman it's not true what you see is the brainchild of people who are by far smarter than me greater than me who have decided to submit their gifts to be used for the kingdom and i'm wise enough to know that these people deserve honor are you getting my point now that's why we provide free bus transport because we we respect the gift of god that is in you people and everyone here we never you never see me treat people 
based on who your father is i don't want to know whether your father is a minister whether you are married to to the to a relation of the president uh -uh. no we no man after the flesh when you come here we treat you with dignity and respect as much as possible is someone learning something please let's finish up on the assignment and touch the last law and then we'll pray just give me 10 minutes and then we'll be out of here when you are where you are assigned nobody can compete with you this is a powerful revelation when you are at the place of your assignment hear me brothers and sisters no man can compete with you i see a lot of preachers struggling i've seen a lot of men of god with all humility wasting their time and their energy trying to do the things that i'm doing i'm doing it with ease because there is grace there i see a lot of people struggling putting themselves under needless pressure and i say why why i never try to do what i am not gifted anointed skilled or trained for I rather bring in a grace that can function in that capacity and then we receive of that ministry. Now let me advise you especially if you are in ministry or you are in any form of leadership. There's something I wrote that is very powerful. You don't give yourself to people. Listen, you give yourself to God and you give God to the people. You will die if you want to meet everybody's needs by yourself. Give yourself to God and give God to the people. Many preachers are dying and killing themselves. They want to do everything for everybody. No, sir. No, sir. Give yourself to God and then give God to the people. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number three. This is the last and then we'll pray someone's life is changing tonight i tell you you will walk out of this place knowing that you will enter extraordinary success i don't care what the limitations are in the name of jesus christ as we talk about this just just pray can you just pray in one minute and say lord i love your laws i love your laws go ahead and pray just pray in one minute as i talk about this last law just few minutes our time is gone and then you will be blessed and will pray. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. hallelujah oh shibala katabaladaba somebody's life is about to change first timothy chapter 5 17 and 18 the last law we'll talk about is the law of honor the law of honor blessed be the name of the lord every time i teach on this something happens to someone's destiny the law of honor first timothy 5 17 and 18 look up everybody let's read one to read let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of what double honor especially they that labor in word and in doctrine hallelujah let's look at one more scripture first peter 2 verse 17 and then i'll teach this for me is one of the greatest laws of success it may not be like that for you but this for me everybody read one to read one more time
for the last time now want to go honor all men and honor the king honor all men and honor the king wisdom is the ability to recognize difference but honor is the celebration and the rewarding of that difference to honor a man means to celebrate and to reward his uniqueness that's what it means to honor to honor a man means to celebrate and reward his uniqueness Please look up. Honor in the school of success is the seed for access. Say it one more time. Everybody, honor is the seed for access. You will never access a place, a grace, an anointing, a dimension of wisdom that you dishonor. Every grace you dishonor lives your life every grace you honor is multiplied in your life never forget this never forget this when the devil wants to drain you of grace he makes you to begin to dishonor the graces around you and you find out that nothing will be the bible says honor all men and then honor the king this is why we take our time to worship god we take our time to honor the king Honor always creates favor. Let me tell you this. If you've been looking for how to create favor in your life, I'm telling you how it comes now. Favor, honor always creates favor 100% of the time. The favor in your life will flow in the direction of honor. You dishonor men, you will never experience favor. Listen, listen. Look at me. This is Pastor, Pastor Pete Rock's wife. Get this. Hallelujah. Pastor Pete is my friend. He's my brother in the ministry. I love him so much. He respects me so much and I honor him so much. This is his wife. Are you getting my point? If I treat his wife well, I have communicated that honor. She will speak well about me in the presence of her husband. And in the presence of another is that true is that true so i am teaching you that the reason why many of us have not seen favor with men is that we have not engaged the law of honor many young people do not honor their parents and you do not know why favor does not leave them to you there's all kinds of disrespect around the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Let me tell you why many young people are struggling in Nigeria. I, I want to be very sincere with you. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. It says, so that your days will be long and it will go well with you. Are you seeing why it's not going well with many people? I know people who stand and look at their parents and insult them. Call their mother prostitute. Call their father drunkard. And it may be true what they are saying. But let me tell you the truth. You dishonor your parents, you are in for failure. Failure that God will not stop, except you cry for mercy and change. Is someone getting blessed? Never dishonor elders. I don't care what level of grace you get to. As I am like this, if I see an elderly woman that I know, carrying something maybe she went to grind and all of that i see mothers around they go to the engine to go and grind by themselves as old as they are they put it on their head they are going and immediately they are going you see the child just bouncing out with one lady he calls his girlfriend or one guy she calls her boyfriend they don't even know what they are doing they are just bouncing and they are, mom see ya and they are going and the mother is carrying this this is dishonor 
the bible says if you don't honor your parents listen to what i'm telling you it says it will not be well with you as simple as that hallelujah oh i will say it i will say it there are many of us we have no respect at all for elderly people there are even people that beat their parents that one is not just that it will not be well with you you just brought a curse upon your life if you ever take your hand and beat an elderly person especially your parents whether they speak to you or not i am telling you scripturally the bible says a man that curses his father his light shall be taken away and it shall be dim for him that's what the bible says i will never never rebuke an elder these are laws there are many graduates they thought it's just getting degree now you have gotten the degree nothing is happening they thought it's just oratory and all of that. No. They thought it's just reading business books. They've read all the business books. There are no patriarchal blessings upon their lives. No parental blessing. There's no elderly person that has spoken to you and said, let it go well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The law of honor honor creates favor what is favor favor is someone willing to solve your problems for you that's favor when someone is willing to solve your problems for you whether financial problems spiritual problems when you honor men you have access to their grace look let me tell you if a door has been closing again and again and again especially the door to the grace of a man of god check well there is dishonor there the entire ten commandments was all about honor honoring god and honoring men god is so obsessed with honor it's not enough to believe in a man of god you must honor that man to ever get the grace i taught this in commanding results and it's all oh goodness i cannot begin to tell you the testimonies that have come from people Many of us do not honor grace. You allow familiarity. I'm not teaching human worship. Hallelujah. Learn to celebrate greatness when you see it. Please write this down. Learn to celebrate greatness. Never trivialize a man's accomplishments, especially if he's spectacular. You say, this woman is a director in 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 this particular parastata so what about it anybody can be a director why are you not a director it's amazing how we trivialize a lot of things and she's behaving like this is it because she's a man of god's wife what's the big deal about being a man of god's wife that's why god didn't make you a man of god's wife you see that celebrate greatness I, I, I shared this and I'll say it again. I will never allow a man greater than me to be in a place and he's paying for something I can pay for and it's within my power to pay. I will fight with that man there or that woman. Man of God or no man of God. I will fight till I pay for it. But there are many of us. You come and sit down and you see elderly people standing and you just sit down. Say, I beg, forget, oh, this is not the issue of anything. This is my right. You see a lot of people do that. And we laugh about it. And you find out that in spite of all the prayer and the anointing service and everything, no job, no marriage, no nothing. And you do not know that this is the law we are violating. How many children have gone to meet their parents to kneel down and say, I'm of a marriageable age right now. Please bless me. Release the anointing that made you get married upon my life. You are there complaining that the home is not going well you, you thought you are playing now 35 36 and counting learn this night god is bringing deliverance for you it's not everything that is about witches and wizards we like passing responsibility to the devil take responsibility this night hallelujah praise the lord honor there are many men of god 
they, they have little ministries 10 members 12 members and you hear the way they preach and lambast ministers they had the other day the other man talking and do, they know nothing about organization they know nothing about finance they don't even have the money to be able to learn finances they know nothing about organization yet they sit down in that little mindset local champions and begin to castigate and and, and talk about everybody see stop it tonight if you are in the attitude of trivializing people's success repent tonight every time you see success kill envy fast by celebrating it immediately the lady is beautiful say it fast before the devil now tells you this and that ah i appreciate you you're a lovely lady very pretty god bless you that's all you can never criticize what you have celebrated hallelujah sam is singing eh he's singing but what's the, what's the big deal jerry there's one other guy that sang it's really not about the other guy he's intimidated so he's using the other guy to turn down another person you you cannot sing anything now you are you are just looking and saying well, this lady was she trying she's trying to show us that she can speak english once you find yourself criticizing people you are communicating a dissatisfaction it's natural with human beings manage it through the law of honor are you getting what i'm saying i celebrate men of god i celebrate vessels of honor generously many of us are very embarrassed let me tell you a few things that you should never do look up please never try to introduce a pastor or a preacher in your church or your fellowship and say this is not a new person is one of us is is one of our friends i you know he's not a he says you know a lot of people do that they say this is one of us uh, and then somebody who has trained and helped and invested in you say he's is an elder uncle just because he cannot accept that he's a great man and we begin to use all kinds of english see that or if i want to introduce um pete rock's wife now she was a member of koinonia here before he used his eagle eyes <laughs> you know all all of that and then he came up and, and carried and all, and all of that but listen it has changed hallelujah i can keep looking at her and say this and that uh -uh. this is my friend's wife and she deserves my honor and i will honor her any day i will never see her trekking somewhere and not stop the car to pick her i don't care where she's going this is honor are you getting my point many of you do not know the law of honor I celebrate men in the secret and in the open I've been following a conference a conference right now I had to follow Mike Mudok's conference with David Ibiome and I've been listening pastor and eating the videos again and again there's a conference going on in Koza I cannot attend it and I've been following it online paying the internet right now as I'm preaching it's paining me but I'm supposed <laughs> I'm supposed to have been following the conference but I sure will remedy for it. Benihin came to Accra. I was happy. I said, I, I, must, I must go and meet him. And I was so excited. When I checked the date, I found out it was miracle service. I said, ah, oh God, you have to compensate me for this. If you are embarrassed about honor, you will not be honored too. Are you getting my point? Please, is somebody learning this tonight? Say in the name of Jesus. I honor all men. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I honor you and I celebrate you truly. Say it. Even if he's pinching you, say it. I know he's not your mate, but say it. I honor you and I celebrate you greatly. Turn to another person and say, I honor you. I know you fought in the morning, but say it. I honor you. Hallelujah never trivialize greatness no matter how little it is never trivialize greatness never trivialize greatness they invite you to go and preach and you know that this is a church that you never who dash monkey banana you it never is just favor 
Don't pretend as though we have been ministering in this kind of churches. Uh -uh. Celebrate the gift. Celebrate the grace. Do what God has called you to do. God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Never come into the presence of greatness empty-handed. I'm teaching you one powerful law of honor. Please, look, I can, I can get down on my knees and beg you. If you want extraordinary success, never make it a culture. Do it delightsomely. Do not cultivate the attitude of coming into the presence of a great man empty-handed. If you do not have a seed, look for opportunities to serve. Are you getting what I'm saying? I never see a man of God empty-handed, no matter what happens. And I'm not talking about this kind of ridiculous seed that was talked about in Malachi chapter 1. That people can't... No, no. You don't bless a great man with leftovers. You bless a great man honorably. I'm teaching you principles that make for great men. I lift my hands in worship As I sing Praises to your name Father, I lift my hands in worship As I sing Glory to your name I never go to see my father or my mother empty-handed. Never. 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 It's, it's a taboo as far as I'm concerned. Never. I never go to greet and see an elderly person. If, if, even if I don't take a gift, then it means I'm going to send something. But many of us, we do not understand that these are little principles. This is how the kingdom is built. You neglect it at your detriment. I'm rounding up. There are two ways I taught you to receive from a great man. One is service and the other is seed. If you don't have money, go and look for the man of God's clothes. Say, Sam, just early in the morning, just say, Sam, I came to your house. Where are your clothes? Sam will say, no, say, chill me here bring it out and you carry a bucket and you are washing Hebrews 7 7 and without contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater you see a woman you go to her house and say mommy I came to wash your plates today say no no my daughter there are no plates carry the ones that are clean say they are dusty soak them again Lord this is how I will have my home this is how I will be blessed the law of honor you can tap into anointings and leave the realm that you are now hallelujah praise the lord jesus now let me say something because i know that there are people who are ministers here and there are many who will be listening please listen to this never invite a man of god whether a music minister a worship minister for a meeting without intentionally planning to honor him you see a lot of people do this in the body of christ let me correct it now hallelujah this is an apostolic ministry we speak to the body of christ and i'm speaking to the body of christ he must be corrected never invite a man of god that you do not have capacity to bless his grace or his gift are you getting my point there are many people who want to bring every great man of god but they are not prepared. If I am going to bring Desmond as a professional decorator, for instance, I must have the ability to honor his grace. If I cannot, use what you have. Please, is somebody getting blessed? There are so many people, I want to invite this, I want to invite that. There are so many men of God that have been pained because people just invite them, come for a meeting, and they never make adequate arrangements. There are laws and principles in this ministry. There are very few men of God who have invited here. And I can tell you this with all humility. When we invite a man of God, we, we prepare as if it's marriage. 
Because if we think that grace is not enough to bless us, then we better not invite him. Are you getting my point? When we invite a man of God right from the junction, the protocol department is waiting for him. When he gets there, they pick him. There are people who invite a man of God and it's when he comes, you go and you keep him standing and you are paying for his hotel room. He says, sorry, how much is this room? Is it double or single, standard or this thing? And the man is, you have been planning for a meeting for a long time. Are you getting my point? Now Pastor Williams is just standing. And you are wondering, or a man of God that you invite, you say, has he come? He's outside, you just say, sorry, please stand up, stand up. Keep these two seats. Sir, you are welcome. What are you doing? You are not intentional about the spirit of excellence. And now I know that many people have not been trained to recognize this. But I want you to know, you will never receive maximally from an anointing that you do not honor. I have found myself teaching and pouring myself in meetings because of the way that I was honored. They honored me from my arrival to my departure. And I found out that there was an unusual flow of grace. I, I went the extra mile to have maybe meetings with leaders or people like that because of honor. But there are meetings you go for, you can't wait for the last session. Immediately it finishes, you just, you just everybody pack your load and let's leave this place never make your ministry like that there are four things that you must look at when you are inviting a man of god let me use the opportunity and say this number one his hospitality hospitality especially when you are it's okay if you are inviting a man of god that is within your region please say it because this has not been taught in the body of christ number one hospitality never carry a man of god and come and frustrate him in a place because you think you are invited no don't do that hospitality hallelujah prepare very well let the man of god eat well if he's fasting ask him don't assume don't say bring only dinner i already know this guy he's always fasting what if he's not fasting that day Number two, prepare to celebrate his grace publicly. Hallelujah. Prepare to celebrate his grace. I'm teaching you how to receive graces. There are places I've gone for once, it would take God instructing me to go there again. When God speaks, then I go particularly just because I'm obeying the voice of God. Otherwise, I will never go there out of personal comfort again. No, no. Number three, let there be the spirit of excellence in your organization. Excellence does not have to mean that you are expensive. Excellence just means the highest level of order. Let there be the highest level of order. And then number four, honor the man. As much as possible, let there be an honorarium. Honorarium simply means that a gift or whatever means of appreciating and celebrating his grace. Just like teachers, you can never really reward mentors and men of God and great men. Make sure you never bring a man of God. I remember one of my friends who went to preach somewhere. They had been disturbing this guy. And when he went to preach, I'm being sincere with you. <laughs> Immediately he finished. They, you know this kind of, this kind of, um, this wire papers. They just squeeze 500 naira, roll, roll it as if it's bribe, and just say, May we thank you for your grace. Ah, bah. I'm, I'm serious, I'm not exaggerating. Now, imagine that that man of God has a wife. Are you getting my point? And now this man left his wife for three days. This is his job, this is where God blesses him. And he comes back after three days, right? And she's happy, she welcomes him. And the man said, we came back from the vineyard of the Lord. We have done exploits for the kingdom. Blind eyes were open, you know, sick bodies. And then they just bring this PTA, you know, this PTA letter of primary school. Where they, they will leave dash and they put the amount. And say, honey, just to remind you that uh, Junior is going to school day after tomorrow. And the man of God becomes angry. He's frowning at everybody in the house because he is saving the, the sinners, but his family is dying. 
never bring a man of God that you are not your capacity don't say I can bring anybody let me tell you the mistake there are many people who try to bring men of God and they overlook these things and when it happens it's like it endorses their error and so they say look even so 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 and so person we have brought him talk more of you you don't know the inconvenience that person went through and he just did it for the sake of the gospel by the grace of God if you see us invite anybody in this house I can tell you at the level of exposure and excellence and finance and blessing that God has given us we will honor and make sure that this man is blessed blessed enough that if we call him tomorrow you say thank you I'm coming everybody say the law of honor any anointing that you do not honor you will never receive anything from and let me tell you brothers and sisters the breakthrough or the key to your next level is hidden in an anointing that may not be so far from you from scripture our breakthrough is always closer to us than we can ever imagine the problem is we keep looking far that breakthrough may be your mother in the same house you've gone to every man of God and every prophet and every herbalist but your mother who has that anointing to set you free there are people who again and again they probably have not been healed because they have not honored what God is doing in this house we are going to pray these keys that I've shared with you will give you uncommon success you can see the book that I'm writing them this these are keys that I am applying in my own life. And those who have gone ahead of us, who found this ancient path, told us that this is the way. And we confirm by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that this is it. I didn't study English. But I know that when a man says, it is finished. It is finished. It's a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God, he said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation, my own access. Like I organize a program and I invite someone and while you are about to drive him I say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what I want to teach us when Jesus went to hell and met Satan a discussion transpired and Satan said remember Adam and he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam and every man that came from him. Let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1. When you read down what? I am he that was dead. But now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth. Access to dominion. Access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected. Watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking. And doing all of the things he did. Man would not be able to partake of it. Because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, 
that he went to heaven as the high priest the lamb the sacrifice as everything and then he took his blood poured it upon that tabernacle and said father you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just god your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this i really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess or of of justice begins to speak i will not fight it but remember that i not only paid the price i paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ Paul saw this in Galatians 2.20 and he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he said, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. It's an exchange. He died for me. Now I live in him. In other words, the day Jesus Christ dies, there is no reason why I should be alive because we are in him. So my life is no longer something I get outside of him. My life is an overflow of what I have received from him. And he so designed that from that point, hence, listen, everything I derive will be because of him, in him and with him. My joy is because of him. My prosperity is because of him. Please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believers victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16. please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what jesus did that's not where i'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that 
whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father. A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye. The multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice. You may get intelligence. You may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have a, what do we call it, a, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end you, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself 
are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a vague thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i am I'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is god who is at work in us to will and to do so it's working the moment the life enters you it's like a genetic mutation it starts altering your configuration are we together now and the holy spirit is the custodian of that life when he comes he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family people don't get married till they are 45 i'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life and the bible says he who has the son has eternal life zoe god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you we have been taught that it works automatically no sir no sir 
you can claim to have the life and still die of sickness now this is where satan's ministry comes the thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life i should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like mere men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a curse. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God speaking according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left, but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we are already together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read 
that there is victory in Christ. The truth is they don't believe it. They just know less fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this, it's a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both are wrong. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation? There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing you open your heavens, when I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness but in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is the way, the life of God that can become any and everything, any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter and Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ and i really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing 
is not enough. Believe in talks of conviction, persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. There remained a rest, a Sabbath for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No, let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me, it's not just by claiming. You will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always a participation. That's what we call koinonia. Everybody say participation. If you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith, you believed I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction, waiting for your participation. You got up, your faith, he calls it your faith. So, what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, he's standing up. It's a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Ejimi, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me, although he has not seen it, so he's putting my integrity to the line. It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looked for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. 
Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not. Stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement and he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son. But delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus. What is healing? I gave Jesus. What is witchcraft? If I did not, if I spared my son, then you will know that there are some things I can spare. But I carried my son. I gave him. And now I have gathered you to give you healing. And you are asking God, this my, this have been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, if I spared not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it would take me to prove myself, I will do it. If it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I, I gave my son. Who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen, Jesus said, father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the Father did not give Jesus, it's like a man. Listen. It's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said I'm a just person and he punished his wife then somebody throws a and says oh guy you know we're Nigerians what do you think he's going to do you say that's my wife inside the gutter I'm a military man this is my wife I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her she's in that gutter I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you. Listen. If it took God. Refusing. To even give Jesus a chance for negotiation. For your sake. Then I assure you. Whatever else it is. That is holding you. Must leave you this night. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, 
I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here. All kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had five brothers that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of five brothers came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, uh, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say Lord I lift my faith I'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray I have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able. Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Second Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight. In the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called Beautiful. Please let me sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there. And he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you 
what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was there. nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak i put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not god will not just get up and act listen it was god that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say lord i put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh god we are here on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you die for God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running. Come running.
Come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. All of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me i'm not gonna let you go i'm not gonna let you sleep away No man condemns you. The mercy, the mercy. what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus Say after me, Lord Jesus, from the depth of your heart, say it again, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. And this night, I surrender everything. My life, my dreams, my hopes, my ambitions, I surrender it to you. I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that from today I'm no longer a sinner I've been crucified with Christ and I have his life right now Jesus has paid the price I receive his life and I declare that I'm a new creation. The old has gone. I begin a new journey. Satan, you no longer have any accusation against me. I pray for you. Keep your hands lifted. Father, on this Good Friday, we present these souls as trophies to you. This is a response to what Jesus did. Oh, receive these souls. Koinonia, present these souls as trophies of victory. Trophies of victory. This is the sacrifice. The rewards of the sacrifice. Hallelujah. I pray for you. I declare that your sins are forgiven. And the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight 
the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of Jesus now listen I want you to do this real fast so you will join us I'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah I like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now Christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening God bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say Lord my time for visitation is here I won't give up no I won't give up I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes I won't give up Lord I won't give up I'll keep holding on until my change comes Lord I won't give up Lord I won't give up I keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. I keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of of i understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a god that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if i were you i'll begin to prophesy over my request and say i wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life hallelujah now please begin to pass your request very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness i tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place 
That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love. Feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. So let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open? Flood gates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the flood gates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the flood. pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between kwara state and ekiti state and i saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people. Listen. 132 years. 120 years. It's like nobody died except they were 100 and something. And in my mind, I was saying, Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long. And the, the interesting part of it, listen, is that the people, they are not on glasses. Their dentitions are still exact. They don't use crutches. They are walking firm. One of them was a senior apostle that died last year, 132, serving in the ministry, alive and doing well. When I saw those obituaries, I said there must be a grace for longevity. There, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity. And I told the guys, I said, when we're coming back, we're stopping here. You can trust me. Oh, the law of honor. As soon as we got there, we stopped and we came out. We went to the women. They could not understand English. Please, quickly, with a request. And we told them, we said, we are pastors. We went to minister in equity. And we are going back to the north. But we discerned that there is a special anointing, a strange grace for longevity. And we want them to release upon us. And then a lot of things happened that I may not say here. And then they took us to one old man. And the man just sat on his chair. When we went, they interpreted and they told him, we came to receive that unction for longevity. The man looked at us. He said, we should all kneel down. And we got down on our knees. And this guy began to pray and prophesy. He's on record. I'm sure maybe one of these days we played. He was in Yoruba. I didn't care what he was saying, Ejimi. All I know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it. This guy kept prophesying, releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us. I said, that's right. I knew that there's no mistake about this. The moment we finished with him, honored him, sowed the seed into his life, appreciated all the people. We were on our way going back to the car. And I felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women. I went back to thank them and I saw a particular woman. And they said, this man, 132 years, this is his wife. 
When they said that, I said, interpret for them that we came for. And the woman looked at me. They can bear me witness. She just tapped me and said, we should follow her. We followed her into a room. She just opened the door. And I saw pictures from one side to the other. She started showing me the pictures. I thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age, you know, like Ketura. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. You've heard me say this thing. And when we finished, before we finished talking, we all got down on our knees. And we told the woman, she first started singing a song. I don't know what it was. I don't care what it was. This woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit. And do you know, I, was, I don't know if I was sharing with them. I felt as if they put a crown on my head. That's how I, as I was feeling. I knew I got this thing. Immediately she got it. I told her, I said, let's snap. I held her hands. And we got to the place. We'll show you the video. And we snapped. And I said, I'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years, alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. He just died. 141. And I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around there. I just saw a church. And people, it's, you can be 190 and not be able to talk. But you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom Pray and say, Lord, my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray.
why do we do this all the time we do this because there are spirits listen that stand in the way of people's destinies don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically i'm about to pray because there are people who came here there are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and he said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three i command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shepa babakata altars 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 right now shake it in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those 
those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. Pray, pray. Don't look at me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Shabba baba In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn. Go ahead and pray. Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight in the name of Jesus. We decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus an end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open deaf ears open destinies moved forward in the name of jesus satanic burdens removed in the name of jesus we thank you lord because speedily 
according to the seasons of life they receive a performance in the matchless name of jesus we decree amen father hallelujah hallelujah please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can i saw a spirit and, and i'm praying for the students now please listen when i was outside ministering i saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names i pray for everyone here the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of jesus the kind of performance i pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story 
in 2007 I remember that time I went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story I went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me I was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and I looked at that person and I vowed that till I die till I go to be with the Lord I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead I made that determination from the depth of my heart I said Lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that I pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because I don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me is a lie there is a man too the Bible says everyone loved Esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it I pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the Bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited I don't know who has disqualified you but I pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight Koinonia I pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give God all the praise thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what I'm there is an anointing for what I'm telling you whatever you start I don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by God we put life back to it right now I say it again whatever you started that ended but not by God by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah give God praise my goodness I wish we had time I wish we had time hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin